right guys, got a quick one for you today. See the snowflakes are starting to fall. Our April blizzard is bearing down on us as they say. So, what I did today, I always put up this wire on the bottom here because my calves can walk underneath my electric drive through gate. So I just put this piece of poly braided wire down here lower so they can't walk underneath the gate. So as you see here, it's hooked up to the wire. You unhook it, you can pull it back over there and drop it on the ground and it's not electrified so it doesn't sit and snap on the ground. And when you're done feeding, hook it back up, it's powered again. So hopefully I don't have these little turkeys running around the yard or the neighborhood or going to visit the neighbors. So, but over here I use the same deal for my gates where I'm going to pull equipment through and for a lane stop. Over here we have one wire see right here that keeps the cows from going out there so they lay up in here where it's a little bit drier right now you know, for a little bit longer until we get 16 inches of snow which who knows what we're gonna get yesterday they were saying 10 to 16 now they're saying 7 to 12 it changes by the minute but then down here I use same poly rope for gates and this I have doubled to the handle the handles hooked up right now it's powered once I unhook it I can pull it over there and lay it on the ground it won't sit and snap on the ground and short out the fence and I can drive wherever and a lot of times I just drop them straight to the ground being they don't have memory like wire does they lay flat on the ground you can drive over them don't get your equipment caught on them. so that's uh, how I do that with the poly rope make a gate with it cheapest gate you can make and obviously I have two strands there because I don't want calves going out and up here I only have one strand because I'm not really too worried about the calves going underneath it right now this time of year and once they go out to pasture they'll it won't really matter and in a couple months there's a single strand that runs from that post all the way up to the pasture. I only have one strand there because I lift that up and let the cows go underneath it when I put them out on these fields. And typically there's only one strand out along the pasture and the field there dividing. So when the calves are smaller they can go out in the field and eat. But typically they don't. Um, but if they do the calves are what you want to grow anyway, so if they go out in the field and eat some of the better grass, hay that's out there, whatever, it's kind of like creep feeding. Um, but typically by the time they're three, four months old, they are too tall to go underneath this wire anymore. And once they really learn what the fence is, uh, they don't even like going underneath that wire anymore, even if they can, because they just see it there and they know that it hurts. So they typically don't go underneath the wire. So. Like I say, I only have one strand here, one strand all the way along between the pasture and the field all the way to the back. And then perimeter, there's three strands between me and the neighbor because he had cattle too. And then there's just two strands through the woods and then everything else is just two strands until you get over by the road, then there's three again. Uh, just a third strand for extra insurance. And actually the bottom strand isn't even powered. So, so yeah, I pretty much only have Two wires perimeter and one wire between pasture and field and never really have an issue so um, maybe if you didn't have cow calf pairs if you just had feeder cattle or something it might be different but typically you're not getting feeder cattle this small and even one strand set at the right height they won't go underneath it so anyways yeah there's all my frozen stuff or the stuff that was frozen I had to peel off the hay to get the net wrap off because I wasn't going to put it out in the pasture or out in the barnyard with the cows try and prevent that from getting all wrapped up around my baler so we'll probably burn that pile here one of these days but 
Anyways, we've been getting some of her pushed up. I uh, got the steer light all cleaned out for now. Been piling manure in here just kind of so this can dry up. And now that it's going to snow again, when the snow melts, it'll run out of here easier instead of just hanging around. So that way, when we do finally start getting manure all hauled out, uh, it won't be as sloppy in here because it should technically dry up faster now. You get that insulation off the ground so the frost comes out, this will dry up faster. And um, yeah. But I don't anticipate hauling a lot of manure until the middle of next month after we get the rye off. Uh, we will haul some manure out before then. But I did get this fuel all covered. You can see the darker manure there. That is from the cow lot. I did take some of the sloppier stuff out and haul it out there. <clears throat> so we got that covered. And the rye back there that we're going to combine, I got that covered with steer lot manure. You can see it is greening up, so hopefully, hopefully the snow um, gives it a shot of nitrogen, and hopefully it greens up fast, because it would sure be nice to uh, put cows out on rye here in another two weeks, if at all possible. So that's kind of the plan. Hoping by the end of the month, we're probably going to graze this front field, put the cows out there at first. And then once the pastures are ready, then we'll start put them out there. But I think we're going to try grazing the one field of rye this spring. And see if we can't let the pastures get a little bit ahead before we put them put the cows out there. So, But we've got seven acres on this field of rye. And then there's this strip of rye all the way down through here. And then I've got rye on the other side. And hopefully that uh, hopefully it all germinates and grows. And we can chop that before we plant corn again. Uh, there was stuff germinating here in rows popping out of the ground. We actually had 65 degrees the other day and it, a couple days of 50 and a day in the mid 60s and then we had nights that were stayed, that stayed in the 40s. So a lot of rye did pop out of the ground. Um, so there is hope but there's a long ways to go. So hopefully we've got this storm coming and, and they're saying daytime temps are supposed to be mid 30s to 40s and then nights are supposed to be right around 30 to 33 just below freezing so i'm hoping that they say rye will germinate at 35 degrees so hopefully the snow isn't going to set that stuff back if anything hopefully it gives us some of that free nitrogen and gives it a kick in the hind end and gets it growing faster because i really want to Chop a bunch of rye this spring. So, anyhow, that's what's going on here. Ideas on a gate. I really love them drive through gates, those electric ones. Uh, it keeps cows in. You don't have to have somebody sit and man the gate for you. And something simple like putting that wire on the bottom is extra insurance. Now, for the steer lot, I have the steel gate on the outside, obviously. But for this, that one wire, all it takes is to keep the calves in. The cows don't monkey with nothing. So, so yeah, there's some ideas for anybody if they uh, are going to set something up like that. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you all have a great day. I hope all of you in Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, I think even the grass is going to get hit again. You guys are all uh, hunkered down the best you can and ready for another blast of this white crap. So anyways, hope you all have a great day. I'll catch you on the next one.